we are in the Austrian Embassy, together with the Minister Margarete Schombrich. Welcome in Rome. Thank you. And uh, the Minister Competencies, Digital and Economic Affairs. Could you tell us what Austria, Digital Austria means? What does it do? Well, uh, Digital Austria is the plan we have to digitalize all the topics of Austrian life. So in the private life, uh, for example, how you learn um, uh, or how you train yourself. Uh, second, in the public life, to do a digital state, to offer all the services in a digital way. And also in business life, especially for SME, where I have a very strong focus to help them in this digital transition. Your uh, public administration, your uh, state, is among the best in Europe. Now you have a mission to go from the father state to partner state. What does it mean? Well, it means that we use all the uh, possibilities that we have through digitalization to um, help people, to help citizens of Austria, to make their lives easier so that they can do their, uh, their applications, that they do their, their uh, topics they have with the state from the kitchen, from home, very quickly and very easy. The basic principle is uh, a mobile first. So we want to bring everything on a cockpit, on a mobile cockpit. So uh, we have learned that not everybody has a PC at home, but a lot of people, a notebook, a lot of people have mobile devices. And therefore, easy access is uh, very much important and that we are working on. And you are right, we are number three in Europe, uh, together with Estonia and with Malta. We have started out with number six or seven when I started out three years ago. Congratulations. Uh, what is your government position about the 5G and do you have any preclusion about the Chinese suppliers, Chinese technology? Well, uh, 5G is a key technology and makes us more competitive in Europe, so we need to launch it rapidly. Austria was the first country uh, uh, in Europe to launch 5G really rap rapidly with one of the providers. And 5G, we use it not only in the private life, but most uh, important in the business life. I come originally from ICT industry. I'm not uh, I'm so long a politician, only four years. Um, and uh, this will help transform the uh, digital processes of all type of companies. So therefore, it's so important. For the security, we, we have standards, high uh, cybersecurity standards. And we are checking each of the suppliers vis-a-vis -vis these standards. This is true for European, but also, of course, especially for uh, Chinese uh, suppliers. Well, Austria has chosen to have a unique minister for digital and economy. Do you think this helps to the governance of the two sectors? And how does it help uh, to get better results? Well, it helps me a lot because of the big scope and digital transformation is the key topic of each company in Austria. I want to make these companies uh, more competitive. And, and uh, on the other hand, uh, we work on this digital state. So it's both for citizens and companies. With companies, um, I'm uh, very much involved in the topic of digital education for adults um, because we have a lot of people uh, working in SME in Austria, such as in Italy, in small family-owned businesses. And they do not have the same access as somebody working for big IT companies like Telecom Italia. And uh, taking care of them is also one of my big issues. And uh, as a Minister of Economy, I can do this uh, easily. Um, how would you rate Austria's research and innovation capacity within the European uh, Union? We are number seven uh, uh, among the innovation leaders in Europe and we are a number two um, in spending of research and development. So around 3.8% of our GDP each year is spent on R&D, on research and development and thereby on innovation. The key success factor is that we share the spending with the companies. 
So I'm also responsible for applied science, not basic science. This is with the Minister of Education, but applied science is the Minister of Economy. And we share the targets with business. And this uh, works out quite well and makes us number two uh, in Europe. Uh, during this day that you are visiting Rome, you are meeting our ministers, you are meeting your counterparts in our government. Is there anything that you can tell us about future projects, common projects, future uh, possibility of exchange of data or whatever? Yes, I had a great exchange with both uh, and uh, we align uh, in certain uh, major topics. First, uh, about that production needs to stay in Europe and we need to take care of the production, especially in microelectronics, for example, needs to stay and we have even to build it and make it bigger. I know that there is big investments uh, in Italy also, also in Sicily, uh, and that we need to take care of them and make sure that they are prospering and that they stay in Europe. Here we need to work with the Commission on the frame conditions. So here we were aligned that we will work together um, very closely to work on this CHIP Act um, which means we want to have 20% of European production in Europe, uh, of, uh, of production uh, in, uh, in, in Europe. And uh, the second big topic was digitization uh, in the state, um, state uh, uh, processes. And here we have a very common uh, track like uh, electronic identity um, and, uh, and one's only uh, principle. So we will uh, share our knowledge here and work uh, together. Uh, do you think that uh, Europe will uh, succeed in having a space within the super cyber powers that at the moment are um, competing each other and having maybe most of the market in terms of technology? Well, it is very important that we speed up the process. And I remember the time when I was in IT industry in Europe in the 90s uh, and in and the years after, um, that we were uh, much ahead in a lot of innovations. So the key is innovation. We need to have the better people, better educated and uh, more innovative. Uh, in that way and keep them in Europe. And this is uh, a key factor. Um, we are not so bad uh, in the B2B sector. So B2C, the big platform economies, of course, they went to Asia and to the US. However, in business to business, um, so where we offer solutions for other businesses, um, Europe is not so bad. We just need to uh, improve the frame uh, conditions be less bureaucratic, both in states and on the European level. Well, you seem very optimistic. Um, maybe in a certain way you show a certain type of de determinism, technological determinism. Do you think, do you see also some risk that are coming from this acceleration in the technological transformation, digital transformation for the society? Well, uh, what we see, the, a big risk is, of course, in uh, cyber security. So uh, cyber attacks are increasing and are the most form of criminal um, attacks against companies. We see this most in operations now. It's not about only sending emails and in the back office, but it's about in the companies, in the production. And here we need to uh, invest a lot. Uh, uh, I was in Estonia a few uh, weeks ago. And there was a question how much money should states in Europe spend on uh, cyber security. I've heard that uh, Italy is planning uh, on that, Austria is planning on that, so I think that is a good way. Um, the second uh, topic uh, that we of course have is uh, a risk. I'm always asked, will digitization not destroy jobs? The contrary is true. So if we look for example, on the number of robots in an economy used in automation in industry, the more robots you use, the less unemployment you have. If we look, for example, to Germany, Singapore, with high uh, a number of robots, also Austria is among them, uh, you have less unemployment. Um, the key is education, digital education. 
And here we do have something which, which we all also discussed. Austria has a dual educational system. What does it mean? When you are 15, 16 years old, you can go both have a job in a company, you're paid by the company, um, and at the same time, half time, you're in school. So we train young people especially on that. Therefore, we have the lowest unemployment rates of youth. Uh, it's uh, less than around 8%. Um, and that is the key trigger to this uh, success, uh, to have them very early, both in companies and in schools. Don't you see, the last question, don't you see a contradiction in uh, the national cyber borders and the spirit of the web that has no borders at all? Well, there is no borders that is uh, good, that uh, our startups and everybody has access to the whole markets. But uh, cybersecurity is a global threat and it is unacceptable that uh, we have uh, looked at this carefully that in a number of attacks there are states behind these attacks. So Europe has to grow up and not be naive, have a European and uh, national initiatives. Every euro that is invested in that is a good euro. Thank you very much and uh, I hope that your staying in Rome will be very fruitful. Thank you very work. much for the invitation. Thank you very much.